For the iOS hands-on, I propose to create an example of iOS SCB encryption decryption on a PNucleo WB55. Uh, we will select a NIST test vector from the document we can found on the link below. So let's switch to STM32 cube ideal. Let's create first an empty project for our Nucleo board. So let's take the port selectors, the WB55, and I will take this one when we will have some OS accelerator. Let's initialize all peripheral with default mode. Okay, everything is ready. We will first activate in the security topic. We've got two OS. We take the first one and we'll just activate it. As you can see here, we can already configure the data type, the key size, the encryption decryption value, the data width unit, and the key on EV configuration that she need to skip or not. Okay, for the moment, I will generate it without any value, and then we will select the test vector we want to use. So let's just generate the code first. Okay, so by default, the key was not initialized here, and we've got the hours in it that have been created with the parameters according to what we've got in the graphical interfaces. So now I propose that we open the NIST document to select our test vector. So I open this document. Let's check. Where vector should I sh select? Um, so what I want to do is a CB, for example, and let's say, why not a 256 encrypt, for example? Okay, so here we've got the key value, the first block, the plain text, the input block, the output block, and the cipher text for this block. So for this example, let's take just this one, and let's encrypt just the first block, okay? So I copy those data inside my code and document to keep them in mind. So on the top here is just to put some I would say comment and the, this is our sorry, this is a vector test that we want to validate together okay so here we've got the key value on two line here so we've got a plain text for the input block so it's the same, output block, and the cipher text. So I propose to do just the encryption of the first block. We can, I would say encrypt all the blocks, but it may be simpler here. So I propose now to configure the encryption inside. So I will copy the key value, because if I come back here, I can now just copy past. Then we can decide to the type data of 32-bit or 16-bit or 8-bit. So I propose 32-bit, it would be easier to convert. The key size, 256. So I copy it again. That's been truncated, okay. Word for the data units, okay. So I think everything is fine. Let's generate the code or update the code currently. Yes, I just save my comment. So let's check the code generated. Now the key value have been, I would say, declared in this variable. If I have a look to the configuration, we will use 32-bit, 256-bit for the key size. 
and it has a CB. Okay, so now we will need to declare the array for the input data, another for the data encrypted, and then I propose to decrypt and to compare to what it was encrypted. So let's create those array now. So let's declare here. So hint, we say that we will work in we will work with 32 bits long data. So input data. Okay, one block what forward. Okay, and then we will initialize with the plain text that is here. Let's format it properly. One, two. Okay. So this is my input data. Now I will encrypt them and put the result in another array. And then I will try to decrypt this data and then we can check that we find again this input data. Okay, so we declare the different structure that we will need. So let's encrypt and decrypt it. So the initialization have been already done, I would say. So let's do a shell crypt. And then completion. We can encrypt IT. I just want a basic crypt. I should not put this P. Here we have got the crypt and we just want to encrypt, not with DMA or with IT, just a basic one. So here will be the pointers. Suggested this one, I think it's okay. This is my input data and the size we have to put here is four. The output would be um, my encrypted data. And let's put a time out value of 1000 for example. Okay. Then I propose that to do a decrypt. So. so let's take a decrypt. Here we can just copy this one. The input size this time will be the encrypted data. Size is still four. The output is my decrypted data and another time out of one thousand, for example. Okay, let's build this. And now let's execute this code. Okay, so let's remove all those expression and let's put them the input data, the encrypted data. Oh, miss it, sorry. And the decrypted data. Okay, so if we open those one and request to see them in so decimal we'll find our value again I prepare those OT to be in hexadecimal and this one also hexadecimal okay so let's do a step by step first I do the encryption and you can see the result here okay we will check after in our sources 
and then try to decrypt. Um, we find again the same value. Let's check the encrypted data value regarding the test vectors we have copied here. So it should be F3, EE, G1, BG. So, so basically it just work. Okay, this is really a simple example just to show you how you can test the NIST vector. Uh, if you need to do some updation with a bit, it's trivial, I will say. But this is the first step. So. Now I will maybe add some way to measure the performance. So first I will stop debugging. And we will use a cystic counter to count how many ticks happen to have the encryption and the decryption. Okay, so we will need some volatile variable. So I propose to create Sorry, three different, so a time start. Then we have a time end. And we will compute the difference between the both with time diff. Okay, let's define some micro. We'll use it at different location. So the time start first will be equal to the cystic. Oh, sorry, it was with a, a petit cystic and we just check the value and remember it, I would say. So I need to put the name of my micro, sorry, time measure start. So here we will remember this value. Then we will define the time measure stop. So here in the time end, we just take the new value of the cystic. And I propose in the same macro, and also we will compute the time diff. So time diff equal time and minus time starts. Okay, so now we can use this just before launching the encryption task or the encryption API and then the time measurement stop when we finish. And we do it again with start minus point. Okay, so I will also need to reinitialize the value of the cystic just to ensure that it started from a good point, I would say. So to do that, I can use a HL function for this to initialize this value. So it's a HL cystic config. And here I will put a huge number. That way we are sure to have no overshoot of this timer. Okay, let's compile this code. Okay. Sorry, I miss this. Now it should be okay. Let's try to compile this one. Okay, this time it works. Let's debug this now. It 
download is okay so this time what I would like to see is this value also in the expression and let's stop just after here to see how many ticks we have for the encryption okay mm, that's not good <laughs> I should have made an error yes it time starts minus sorry it's decreasing not increasing I miss it sorry about this let's do it again terminate and reload the counter start to the top and decrease each time so this time it should be okay just run it okay this time I prefer such kind of value so for the encryption I've got this number of statistics and if I go for the decryption it should be longer in fact yes quite more long and you remember we have to derive the key first and then to do the decryption this measurement of performance I would say is a little bit there is no perspective now but when you will use some software library you can instrument the code in the same way and compare the value that could be interesting